Hello Home Coffee Roasters. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the very first steps that I took as a home coffee roaster learning how to roast on a drum roaster. Stick around. <music> All right, thanks for joining me today and welcome to the Virtual Coffee Lab. The first time I ever roasted on a full-blown drum roaster, it was a roaster just like this at Mill City out in Minneapolis. And they went through an exercise with us that was really valuable for me. And it taught me several things. It taught me a lot about how coffee is affected by temperature or heat over time. And it also taught me a little bit about the roaster and the roaster's ability, its performance, um, how quickly I could roast coffee on that machine. And so I wanna share some of those steps with you here. I've got a couple of steps, got the roaster already warmed up, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna roast a pound of coffee. This is a Central American coffee. That's really not important right now. What's more important is what we're gonna do and what we're gonna observe as we roast this coffee together. This roaster has been idling now for about 45 minutes and it is at a very consistent temperature. As a matter of fact, you can take a look at Artisan right here. I'll start it up and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and so you can see it here while I'm talking, I'm gonna hit the charge and you'll be able to see the temperatures. You'll see the blue line, which is the bean temperature and the red line, which is the exhaust temperature here on my drum roaster. So while you're seeing this on the graph, I wanna share with you the exercise that Mill City had me do. We're not really gonna make any changes to the drum roaster. We're gonna set the power on this roaster and we're gonna let the roaster run all the way through, probably till second crack. So we're gonna have these beans go from green to yellow to first crack and then at second crack, we'll drop the beans out of the roaster. And what I want to observe, I want you and I both to observe, is the color of the coffee. We're going to be talking about that as well as just how, without making any changes to the roaster, what happens with the temperature increase over a period of time. That temperature increase is called rate of rise, and we'll be looking at that. What happens with the bean temperature, and you'll see how that quickly increases and then it starts to gradually increase less. We'll, we'll talk about that. And then ultimately we'll look at the exhaust temperature well, as well and um, we'll talk about that. So I'm hoping to be able to do all of that in this one video, so let's get started. Okay, by the way, before we get started, take a look at Artisan right now, just so you can see. I've got, uh, my exhaust temperature is flat. It's going straight across at 432 degrees. Uh, if you look to the right, you'll see 432.6. And the bean temperature is 395.1. And you'll see a squiggly line down at the bottom. That's my rate of rise. Um, that rate of rise on my roaster does this a little bit. And I'm used to that. It's okay. Um, that'll be for another video. We can talk more about that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to charge this coffee. So I'm going to reset Artisan. Reset it. I don't want to save. Turn it on. And then we're going to hit start. And I'm going to charge the roaster. Right? Uh, hitting the button charge and dropping the lever and closing the door. Okay. So let's take a look at Artisan real quick. And you'll see on Artisan that both the bean temperature, that's the dark blue line, and the red line, the exhaust temperature, are both dropping. Now, i am got this idling at 0.29 kPa. That doesn't mean anything to you, but it is important uh, to me based on with my roaster. So I'm gonna turn this up now and I'm gonna turn this to 0.75 kPa, and I'm gonna leave it there for the entire roast. Now, I'm not really concerned about doing a really good roast right now. now this is an exercise, and so in this exercise, we're gonna observe some of the things that are happening and talk about them. We're not trying to craft some great coffee right now. 
but what we learn here will help us understand what we need to do with our heat, okay? That's really important because that's really the only setting that we have really changed on this, um, and that is introducing heat to the roaster at a higher rate, which is 0.75 kPa. So that's probably about 75% uh, energy for maybe 70% energy for my roaster. That's 70% of its full power is what I'm roasting at right now. All right, so we've got a minute and a half and I'm gonna start to, um, just for our exercise, I'm gonna start to take samples of the beans out every minute starting at two minutes because we wanna watch the color change. And we'll be able to see all of this at the end of the video, the color change. And when I do all the editing, I'll, I'll already have the beans laid out so you'll be able to see them. So you're seeing the bean color when I pull it, like right now. Okay, so this is two minutes. You can take a look at the color of the beans and you'll notice that they are not as dark as they were originally. They're starting to lighten up just a little bit. What's happening is, is that the moisture in the beans is starting to leave. All green coffee beans have moisture in them. And when we roast coffee, that moisture is, uh, is evaporated as heat is applied. All right, we got 10 more seconds. We're gonna pull out another sample here, but notice on the artisan, you'll notice the red line and all of the lines are now starting to increase except for the exhaust temperature. The exhaust temperature will slowly begin to climb, but you'll notice the rate of rise really climbed quick. That's the lighter blue line down at the bottom of the screen. We've got about a 20, 18.6 degree a minute temperature increase is what's taking place. That's what that blue line represents. The dark blue line is the bean temperature. You'll see that we charge the roaster at 396 degrees. The bean temperature, according to Artisan, went down. And we know that's not true because the beans went into the roaster cold. 70, 65, 70 degrees here in this room. And the beans did not start out at 396 degrees. That's the probe reading of the air in the drum. That was the temperature that it was reading. Okay, we're gonna take another sample here. All right, at four minutes, we start to see some yellow. We want this coffee to be full yellow, and that is the first, the ending of the first phase of roasting coffee is the dry phase. My trier allows me to monitor this coffee. And right now I would say that the coffee is just about yellow. Not quite. Just a little bit more. We're all gonna have different methods of determining when the coffee is fully dry. For me, I don't like to see any green in the coffee and that's dry end and that's at five minutes. I was a couple minutes late on that. And I'm gonna mark dry end. And because I'm late, I'm just going to go ahead and make adjustments here to my dry end time, my events. And dry end was at five minutes and five seconds. All right, excellent. Okay, you'll notice that the rate of rise is starting to descend. The, and I haven't made any changes to my power the exhaust temperature is continuing to rise. And if we let this roast go forever, the exhaust temperature would eventually go back to where it started at uh, 415 degrees or whatever uh, we saw that it was in the very beginning of the roast. Six minutes, take another sample. All right, let's look at the bean color here real quick. The bean color is definitely gone from yellow into more of a brown note and you'll notice that uh, there's still a little bit of yellowing in here but it's mostly brown 
and it's going to continue to get darker and darker as we get further into the roast. This is the natural progression of the roast. Now if I were to roast this coffee trying to craft it for optimal flavor, I would be backing off my heat at this point, but we're just doing this exercise of not making any adjustments to the roaster and we're monitoring how coffee changes over time as well as how fast the roast is moving uh, and we're noting just color we're trying to learn about color too all right so we've got seven minutes coming up we'll go ahead and grab another sample and each of these samples the coffee is going to get darker and darker looking all right now you'll notice that my rate of rise has a little bit of an elevation. Um, we'll call that a flick. That is a term in coffee roasting. And basically it's a little burst of energy uh, that is noted. And if I had my exhaust temperature uh, set to be very sensitive, where you'd see a lot of squiggly lines, you may have seen a little bit of a bump there. Um, uh, maybe not. Ultimately, what you are seeing though is a temperature increase and that could be because we're getting really close to first crack and we've got uh, some energy starting to be released from the bean. And that's really important. So that really we've got a couple of things going on here during the roasting process. I'm hearing a crack. And there's beans at eight minutes. And first crack has begun. How do we know when first crack begins? When we hear a succession of cracks, right? Not just one crack or another crack, but crack, crack, crack. Then we know that first crack has begun. That's an audible way to notice that. Okay, so when beans are roasting, they are being roasted by temperature, by heat and power from the machine. But uh, the roaster is very hot, and so when the beans are touching the steel drum wall, heat is being transferred to the beans. When the beans touch each other, heat is being transferred to the bean. That is called conductive heat transfer, and that's one method of heat transfer to the beans. Eight minutes, or nine minutes is coming up. We're going to grab this. we got a rolling first crack going now. The other type of um, heat transfer is convective heat transfer. Think of a convection oven. Air is used to be able to help transfer heat to the beans. And we have air being used in this roaster right now. It's at a fixed temperature. It's a medium air level right now. So there's air movement and it's enough to move smoke out of my roaster, but it's not enough to really uh, suck any beans out through the system. It's not on a high setting. Okay, we've got 20 more seconds. Um, first crack is just ending. Notice the little bit of a crash and then a flick. Some exothermic reaction going on there. Heat is being released from the beans. And we're at 10 minutes. And I'm hearing second crack possibly begin. Second crack is beginning. And second crack uh, is, I, I usually never roast into second crack. I'm going to turn the cooling fan on. Uh, second crack is where the structure of the bean now is starting to be deteriorated a little bit. You can hear it going like crazy. And I'm going to go to 11 minutes, and then I'm going to drop the coffee. It's really going. I'm going to turn off the heat, and here's my sample, and I'm dropping the coffee. been a long time 
since I've taken coffee this dark. <laughs> It's still cracking. I can see some oils on the beans. Got a hitchhiker. All right. Well, that was an interesting exercise. Um, and it happened fairly quick. It was 11 minute roast. 11 minutes and six seconds according to Artisan, but you can see what happened because I didn't make any changes to my heat There was a point after first crack that the uh, Rate of rise started to drop and then it bounced and then it started to skyrocket and we went into the second crack All right, we're gonna take a look at what happened with this roast here But before I do that I want to thank you for joining me today And if this is content that's been helpful for you hit the like button now also consider subscribing, that really helps the channel out, and hit that notification bell if you wanna be the first to know when videos are uploaded. Let's take a look at the graph here. Our artisan is really giving us a lot of great information about the roast. Now, again, this was just an exercise. We're not really focused on the profile itself. It's not a good roast, but there's information here that you should be aware of to help you understand what's happening during the roasting progress. First is the green, yellow, and brown bar at the top. That's information about the total roast time and how long you spent in the three phases of coffee roasting. The dry phase, which is the green, the yellow phase, which is the browning, Maillard, or middle phase of coffee roasting, and then that third phase is the brown phase, which is known as the development phase. And each of these phases is different things happening to the coffee. I did a video on that. You can check out up here in the corner and um, there's a playlist that talks about coffee roasting essentials you should check out. Also, if you take a look along the bean temperature line, you'll see events being mentioned. You'll see the charge temperature, the charge event, turning point event where the temperature of the beans being recorded actually starts to increase. And that is kind of a, a, a confusing number that, to see here because the beans are room temperature and they are simply increasing in temperature all the time. But the probe that's measuring these is measuring the drum temperature empty. And then when you put the beans in, there's a period of time that it takes for that to kind of register and settle in before it kind of understands and reads the bean temperature rather than just the drum temperature itself. Working our way up, we have the dry end event at 330 degrees that's uh, Fahrenheit. And then FCS is first crack, 382 degrees, along the timeline of eight minutes and nine seconds. And then second crack, which had a different sounding crack, we heard that during the roast, 415 degrees at 10 minutes and 18 seconds. And then we dropped the coffee out of the roaster at 431 degrees, 11 minutes and six seconds for that's the total roast time. So this video was not designed to help you learn how to roast as much as it is to help you understand some of the concepts of roasting coffee without getting overwhelmed with making changes to your settings. So I hope this video has been helpful. Share your thoughts. I'd love to hear your comments. Let me know what you think about this video. If you have suggestions or comments or you've had experiences when you started learning how to roast coffee, especially on a drum roaster, what did you do? What kind of exercises did you do to start roasting? Or did you just go into it and then learn from your mistakes? That's one way to do it. But this way, it, this helps you, it actually gives you other information rather than what we just talked about. It helps you understand the roaster's capabilities and understand uh, how you will need to control your roaster. And what happens if you make a mistake and you don't make a change in your setting? What happens? Well, the roast, continues to move forward quickly and so it's important for you to maintain control of your roaster so yeah share your thoughts let me know what you guys think about that and uh thank you for joining me today and i hope you have a great week roasting we'll see you next time take care